Open wheel or closed wheel? On road or off road? For as long as different forms of motorsport have existed, people have debated which are the most exciting and which kinds of racing are worth watching. We all love cars and the thrill of competition, so why is there so much division in the motorsport community? Every motorsport has elements that make it exciting, but also potential barriers of entry for new fans. So let's talk about them. It's inevitable that this video will be somewhat opinionated, but I also want to hear what you have to say down in the comments, unless your opinion is something like this. Anyways, let's get into it. F1 is the ubiquitous pop star of the motorsports world. No matter where you live, there's no escaping its reach, and with good reason. F1 teams have the biggest budgets and the brightest engineering staff, who crank out some of the most impressive race cars in the world. Combine those cars with a calendar full of legendary circuits and street courses, and it's easy to understand the series' never-ending appeal. But for some racing fans, there's an inherent problem when you put as much engineering into a race car as you would a space shuttle. For years, F1 has been an arms race of motorsport, complete with unilateral domination. For people that aren't engineering enthusiasts, seeing a single driver win 68% of the races in a season can get really boring. For driving purists, DRS sometimes feels like a video game power-up, despite its necessity to execute an overtake. That's not to say that F1 doesn't have exciting moments and good battles. It's full of them, and the 2022 regulation changes definitely seem to create better racing overall. It's just that if you're looking for constant lead changes and close racing around every corner, F1 might not be the series for you. The best parts of F1 establish it as a chess match of motorsport. The smartest minds racing to out-engineer and out-strategize each other with racing's top athletes controlling the pieces, are the elements of the sport that really set it apart and make it special. For as far as the sport has come, it's a shame that NASCAR still struggles to break away from its redneck stereotype. NASCAR has never been as much about technology compared to other types of racing, but the switch to the next-gen car puts current Cup Series cars in line with something like an Australian supercar or a GTD road racing car underneath. While the shift in chassis design and push for more road course racing has driven away some stock car purists, it's brought in new fans who wouldn't have been interested in the sport back in its heyday. The next-gen car also produced some really close racing in 2022, with 19 different drivers winning a race throughout the season, the most since 2001. For people that want to see close battles almost every week, contact between drivers, and a variety of different winners, the Cup Series is great racing to watch, but there's still a lot that could be better. You can't deny that NASCAR loves to try to manufacture drama. They're the only organization I know of that uses an elimination-style knockout bracket, rather than a pure points championship. This leads to some exciting moments on track, but it can also take deserving drivers out of contention for a championship if they suffer just a little bit of bad luck. Fans are also split on the merits of stage racing, where races are split into three segments with a guaranteed caution in between each stage. It does bunch the cars together again and add more close racing, but knowing when a caution will come out takes away some strategy decisions that teams would otherwise have to make. With most components standard between teams, next-gen cup racing is a game of having the right setup and a driver who can finish the job. It won't appeal as much to fans who want uniquely engineered cars, but there's no doubt it produces close battles and thrilling moments, if you can get past NASCAR's weird points system. As far as on-road racing series go, it's IndyCar that undoubtedly takes the prize for the most varied schedule. Racing on ovals, road courses, and street courses has long been a staple of IndyCar and really tests the driver's ability to adapt to their environment. Similar to NASCAR's next-gen car, IndyCar has had a common Dallara-designed chassis since 2012, which brings the same pros and cons we've already discussed of sacrificing team-specific engineering for more competitive racing. Similar to F1, IndyCar also has a push-to-pass aid, which works by increasing turbocharger boost pressure rather than moving wing elements. There's mixed opinions on this, but unlike F1, IndyCar's push-to-pass can also be used to defend, which can make it a bit more interesting. Anyone who wants constant action might get bored when drivers develop dominant leads or when street course races turn into parades. But overall, IndyCar is an often overlooked series that has a little something for everyone. IndyCar viewership was the best it had ever been in six years during the 2022 season, so hopefully the series will continue to grow and reach a larger audience. 
Australian Supercars Championship, IMSA, WEC, SCCA, BTCC? Am I missing any acronyms here? Road racing's popularity is somewhat masked by how diversified it is between regions, series, and sanctioning bodies, but looking at the granular details of every different type of road racing would easily be an hour-long video. That diversification means that each series holds a smaller amount of media coverage and popularity by itself, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. There really is a road racing series for whatever you're into. If you want to see manufacturers go head-to-head -head with racing versions of their street legal cars, there's classes like IMSA's GTD or World Endurance Championship's LMGTE. Prefer the close battles and driver skill involved with a spec series? It's hard to beat the Mazda MX-5 Cup. Love high-tech cars? There's plenty of prototype racing to go around. Unless you just hate road courses for whatever reason, it's hard not to find a road racing series that's exciting to watch regardless of your taste in vehicles. If everything we've discussed so far seems tame to you, you've probably been waiting for me to get to rallying. Rally is the ultimate demonstration of car control and is arguably the most difficult motorsport in this video. I'm not going to spend time to try to justify why you should watch it, but instead on what might be making it hard for people to get into, specifically us Americans. Here in the US, rally takes a back seat to the other types of racing we've discussed so far. With only a few high profile drivers and no WRC events, America is somewhat disconnected from the rest of the rallying world which is unfortunate considering that we have the third largest population of any country. There are a few smaller organizations that put on some great events stateside, but without WRC level resources and coverage, it's hard for the sport to grow. From a spectator's point of view, Americans have been conditioned by other motorsports to want up close battles rather than a race against the clock. Attend a rally live and seeing a car fly by for a few seconds just to have to patiently await the next one can get tiresome for those who don't have an appreciation for it. For such an exciting motorsport, it seems like the biggest issue with growth ultimately comes down to a lack of fan education and media coverage. I think it's fair to say that there's something to appreciate about every form of motorsport. If you've made it this far, first off, thank you. And secondly, I'm genuinely curious. What do you think? Where are you from? And what are your favorite racing series? And what are your perceptions on each kind of motorsport? My goal with this channel isn't to make videos only for F1 elitists or NASCAR purists, but rather to build a community for people who get excited about any and all forms of motorsport. So if that sounds like you, then consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.